So this is the Ampeg VT40. It is an extremely capable 60 watts tube amp with four 10 inch speakers. It uses 70 27 A tubes, which gives the amp a very characteristic sound. It sounds absolutely fantastic for almost everything. And I think it's strange that it didn't become more popular than it is. In this video, I'll show you how it sounds and we'll explore why it's not as popular as it should be. So the first thing that might have been a serious turnoff when it first was uh, released is the fact that the reverb sounds absolutely horrible. Let's fix that with using this instead. Sounds kind of Fenderish to me, super reverb maybe, probably because of the speaker configuration, but to me it gets more interesting when you turn the volume up. There are not a lot of guitar players that I'm aware of at least that used this amp, but one pretty known one is Keith Richards from the Rolling Stones. Or he didn't use the VT40, he used the VT22. The VT22 is 100 watts compared to the 60 watts in the VT40 and it has two 12 inch speakers instead of the 410. I've done an A-B test with the VT40 and the 22 and circuit wise they sound extremely close. <laughs> but the uh, different speaker configuration sounds very different. However, Keith Richards did use an Ampeg on sticky fingers and I think you can get some very similar sounds with the VT40. I got mine was uh, of course to explore the sounds of Queens of the Stone Age and especially Songs for the Deaf and yes it does that sound it is that sound but how would I describe the driven sounds of the Ampeg VT40. They are extremely raw and direct and there's a chunkiness in the mids uh, that I haven't heard in other amps. The top end is also more pleasing to me compared to other amps. But since it has 10 inch speakers, uh, close micing can lead to a very raspy sound. So I go pretty far on the side of the cone to avoid that. <laughs> Actually, the whole thing with Queens of the Stone Age and Josh Homme about pushing the mids, it, it works for that sound, but I actually find myself dialing back the mids a bit to not make it that mid honky. And also to make the guitar sound a bit more like how I like them. Yes, I don't want my guitar tones to be exactly like the ones on Songs for the Deaf, believe it or not. The drive tones are also kind of fussy. 
or at least a fussy character. And I think this played into the myth that Josh Homme used fuzz pedals for his signature sound. He didn't, but this amp sounds kind of fussy, sometimes at least, but with a much tighter low end than you get with a fuzz pedal. <laughs> And that sound, which is kind of a different sound from the Marshall sound or a pushed Fender, was maybe not something that the mass of guitar players wanted back then or now. It is kind of a unique thing that some people like, but it's not for everyone necessarily. <laughs> competition with Fender, Vox and Marshall was also pretty hard back then when this was released and Ampeg was of course known for making bass amps which probably didn't help for the VT40 and its popularity. But there are quite a few of them out there. They are cheaper than other vintage amps so you should definitely try to snag one if you can and if you like the sound you're hearing in this video. There are some different versions out there and some claim that the top loaded one sounds better. I don't think so. Just make sure to stay away from the distortion channel on the newer models. I for example have one with distortion but I just plug into channel 2 don't use the distortion at all. You don't have to do the Keith Richards or Queens uh, thing. It's great for almost everything. And if you like reverb, that sounds like a slapback delay inside a long metal pipe, you are in for a treat. Bye. <laughs>